Hi, this is Francis Masson from the Computarium. On this second video, I will show you how to solve a second order differential equations of a damped oscillator using a vintage AMF analog computer. So, let's start with the physical system. Imagine you have on an horizontal plane, a system with a spring, a mass M, and a damping system, which will slow down movement by a force proportional to the speed. These are the three elements of the system. Let us assume that the spring has a stiffness S and the proportional parameter to give this damping resistance will be K. If we push this mass out of its equilibrium position by a distance Y the spring will be elongated and will pull back with a force which is proportional to y, s times y. And also the damping system will resist the movement with a force which is proportional to the speed and to the, to the velocity of the movement. And the velocity, we well known, is the first derivative of the position. Now, Newton says that the sum of all forces must be equal to the mass times acceleration. And we know that acceleration is the second derivative. So, we have a system that I will turn around as that can be written as m y second equals minus k y prime minus s times y. This is a differential equation of the second order describing this oscillator. We don't speak about gravity because we assume the system rests on a frictionless air cushion table, for instance. In what follows, we just, to simplify, assume that all these parameters are one. And our equation simply writes as y second equals minus parentheses y prime plus y. This is an equation that has to be solved using this analog computer. Let me remember that the analog computer holds integrators and summers inverters. We now have to transform or traduce this mathematical expression in one which enables us to make the plugging of this computer. <clears throat> Let's start with y second and assume we know y second. We will fetch this one into an integrator and S integrator makes also an inversion of sine. The result is minus y prime. We will integrate a second time, and the result of the integration of minus y prime is y. Now <clears throat> we have somehow to make an addition of these both terms. Actually, of the opposite of these terms. So, I will take an adder 
And remember that an ether change always a sign. And we root the y into the adder. Let's take is here a second adder. And we just use this as an inverter. So the output of this one is minus minus y prime, it's y prime. I add this to our first adder. And now what we have here is minus y prime plus y. Now this has to be equal to y second. So following a suggestion first made in the 19th century by Lord Kelvin, we route or we root, if I take the English expression, back this term to the input. And I have now this loop entering the first integrator, following all the system and coming back. This is exactly what we have to build now with our analog machine. Okay, let's start with the first integrator and tie the output of the first integrator to the input of a second one. This is the output of the first integrator and this is the input of the second one. Let's tie the output of the second integrator to the input of an adder. So this is the output of the second integrator and we will take this adder here. We have also to take the output of the first integrator and change its sign by routing it through an inverter. So the output of the first integrator is here and we will change its sign by routing it through this inverter. And the output of this inverter will go to the input of the last adder. So all these yellow cables now define this structure. What's missing is the loop back to the first integrator. I will take a blue cable and go back from this second adder to the input of the first integrator. Now the system is ready. What has to be done is to visualize its operation and we will use a Fluke digital oscilloscope. It has to be connected first to a ground. So let me use this plug as ground. And the signal to observe, sorry for that, I have to fiddle a bit with my cables. Here I am again. So the signal to observe will be the output of the second integrator. Let me clamp this one to the oscilloscope. Okay, now everything should be ready. I will switch on the oscilloscope. Initial conditions are set by several potentiometers, we won't change them. Let's just initialize 
the machine, launch the oscilloscope, and launch the integrator. Now, you see that the output voltage is varying in time, first like a sinus wave, but you clearly see that the amplitude of the following oscillations become less and less. What we have here is exactly a damped oscillation. The damping is expressed by the speed of the decrease of the amplitudes and that uh, decrease usually is of an exponential nature. So I will stop the oscilloscope. Remember what we have done. We have taken this mathematical differential equation. We solved this equation with a vintage analog computer from 1970. This computer doesn't hold any memories. It just is built on operational amplifiers. And these amplifiers with correct other resistors or capacitors can function as adders, summers or integrators. We just translated a mathematical expression into a physical model. And this model behaves as does the reality, the damping oscillator which we wanted to study. There aren't any numbers, no bits, no bytes involved, but the running is extremely smooth and gives us the same result as mathematical theory also solves. Thank you for watching.